Hello and welcome to Politics Today. I am Farrukh Pitafi. Viewers, once again, we are going to continue from where we left yesterday. Yesterday, we were talking about the, uh, you know, atmospherics before the election, the way various leaders are deserting their parties. Uh, we saw uh, there was a forward block that was formed, not forward block actually, there was a pressure group that detached itself from ruling PMLN yesterday. And they, they formed a Southern Punjab block demanding the creation of new province. And then we also, uh, today we saw a defection uh, coming from uh, PTI. Uh, a gentleman actually left PTI and joined PMLN. And uh, finally, MKM also is seeing a lot of defections. And not only that, they are undergoing a state of schizophrenia, so to speak because uh, now there are two heads or two, two uh, distinct brains that seem to be working and then there is uh, a head in or a brain or a mind in exile also in the shape of uh, uh, Park Sarzameen party. So uh, we are going to talk about these matters, we are going to ask uh, uh, what becomes of the elections and what becomes of the party strategies. This is one question. The second question is about the formation of care, caretaker government. We know we are uh, hardly 42, 43 days away from the next uh, uh, caretaker setup. By this time, usually political parties, especially the, uh, the leader of the house and the leader of the opposition, uh, sit, uh, not only sit together, they find a candidate. Uh, for the uh, for, for, for the post of uh, caretaker prime minister, we know today prime minister of Pakistan and the opposition leader met, and there were certain names like the Justice Tasadduk Jilani, a couple of others as well. They were mentioned, uh, but uh, what uh, who's who might actually get that post? We are going to ask this question as well. In order to help us understand these matters, we are joined by Kaiser Ahmed Sheikh Saab, leader of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, the ruling party. Thank you very much, sir, for being part of the program. And uh, in Lahore, I have with me Heather Zaman Qureshi Saab, leader of Pakistan People's Party. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, participating in the program as well. Uh, we were expecting a third guest from MKM, but last minute there was some, uh, you know, unforeseen uh, reasons that's why uh, he cancelled but um, no matter we are going to continue the discussion Sheikh sir, I have to start with you sir yes. and uh, uh, tell me what do you make of this recent defection first we saw a defection in Balochistan and now the uh, leaders or MNAs uh, electables from southern Punjab have detached themselves from your party is it a sign of the times or is it only a, a, a proper angling people are preparing for the next election and they want to have maximum leadership. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Farag sahab, uh, you have uh, asked a very pertinent question. You see, this is uh, not the first time that uh, we are seeing this defection or not, I cannot say it defection. They, uh, they have just uh, asked that they are not in that party or they have resigned in the National Assembly mm -hmm. seats or Provincial right. Assembly seats. So this is not the first time. Whenever we have seen the elections are near, so these type of uh, changes, they, there are various reasons for these changes. Some, some reason, some people feel they might not get the ticket. Some people feel that some other uh, will uh, be more uh, uh, competent and uh, he may get the ticket. So, and, and moreover, some people feel that they might uh, uh, be in a position to contest independently mm -hmm. and the, the, the rumors are there, uh, everybody knows about it, mm -hmm. that uh, 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 generally rumors are that there will be hung parliament. Okay. So for the hung parliament, anyone who feels that he has a comfortable position in his own constituency, he prefers to be a person who is elected independent. To, to maximize their leverage, right? Yes, of course. Because in our system mm -hmm. of a, a parliament, you, you have seen that uh, when there is a party which wins and other party is in the opposition, so the role of opposition party is minimal. Okay. Actually, we should have more role of the opposition also. Even the parties who win, there are very few MNAs 
who have a leverage, who have a say in the policy making. Okay. So uh, before I go to Lahore, I have one more question, yes. and that is uh, one of your critical allies, Pir Pagado, uh, sitting together with, uh, with Parvez Elahi, and they they actually declaring that they are forming uh, an electoral uh, alliance. Does it tell you something about things that are happening? You see, as far as the Pir Pagado is concerned, I live in Karachi and uh, Pir Pagado Kingri house is just half a kilometer from my house. Okay. So we are neighbors since long. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, he has uh, often declared, his, his, his father various times declared that he is a person of establishment. Mm -hmm. Openly, he's, he's no, there's no okay. uh, the secret in it. Okay. So. It shows, and the uh, Kaf League uh, has been a uh, 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 so, uh, so party. So-called Queen's Party. So this is a, uh, this is a natural uh, 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 alliance. Are you, are you telling us or are you implying that the establishment doesn't want you to see back in power after no, elections? No, no. This I cannot see. I okay. cannot say. Yeah. It all depends. But uh, because he has declared himself many times, okay. this is an open secret that right. Pir Pagaro said that people... Uh, believe or not believe, I am a person of, uh, backed by establishment. This right. his father used to say many times. Right. And the Kaf League, you see, was uh, definitely establishment uh, 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 had a role in creating uh, Kaf League. Yeah, and Pervez Eli has been in the government of Mr. Uh, Mr. Musharraf. That is quite an interesting point because uh, a former uh, chairman, Senate, actually, uh, uh, made a statement today, gave a statement today in which he said that he feels that maybe there's some kind of uh, manipulation, pre-poll manipulation going on. Karachi Saab, he is uh, uh, from your party. Uh, care to comment on that and care, care to comment on the uh, formation of alliances in Pakistan right now and the defection, sir? Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to your show, uh, Mr. Batafi. It's indeed a pleasure. I was listening to what Mr. Kesar Ahmed Sheikh was dilating upon earlier in the show, and I will come to that. But certainly, if Mr. Raza Rabani has uh, uh, made a statement, probably it's his uh, personal opinion. And while he was Chairman Senate, there were many occasions that uh, he did make statements, and uh, particularly to the effect that, you know, the PMLN and the former Prime Minister, Mr. Sharif, uh, never even bothered to attend the proceedings of the Upper House. And uh, there was a time that the Senate chairman, along with the members, uh, had to stage a protest, uh, and which, which eventually, uh, you know, translated into one uh, attendance uh, by the uh, former Prime Minister. So, Mr. Rabani, of course, uh, he is a man of his own mind at times, and he has uh, uh, shared a concern which uh, uh, everyone uh, feels uh, that, you know, we have concerns about free, fair and transparent elections. Uh, we had them even 2013 and post-2013. And uh, I was a bit amused by Mr. Sheikh's comments that, you know, there's a perception that there's engineering and there is an establishment, and particularly in the context of PMLF uh, and Mr. Pagada. Well, uh, were, were these fears not prevailing at the time when you solicited their support and he joined, uh, his party member joined the cabinet? Uh, were you not aware of uh, their alignment if at all, and then particularly in the Senate elections in February, uh, PMLN supported uh, Mr. Muzaffar Hussain Shah, who got elected as a PMLF senator. Be that as it may, let's come back to uh, the forward block or the uh, defections, particularly for the from the parliamentarians uh, hailing from the south of Punjab. Actually, you see, uh, Mr. Patafi. Uh, it's, it's quite ironical that uh, uh, except for Pakistan People's Party, which vociferously has advocated consistently since 2007 uh, onwards that, you know, there's a genuine grievance of the people of South Punjab. Please don't uh, ignore them, give them funding, give them importance, give them their fair share of uh, uh, financial and administrative autonomy and uh, yeah. uh, make them involved in the decisions. Uh, and we, we had it in our manifesto. And then Pakistan People's Party, uh, uh, in, in February of 2012, uh, we finally uh, were able to get a two-thirds uh, uh, majority resolution passed from the Provincial Assembly of Punjab, which is the constitutional require as far as Article 239.4 is concerned when it comes okay. to uh, the altering the boundaries of provinces. And then we, we uh, did uh, manage to place uh, uh, the 24th Amendment Bill in the Senate, and by the grace of Allah and support of all parties, barring PMLN, we were able to pass that. 
by two-thirds okay. majority. Now the next thing was the National Assembly as per the Constitution. But we didn't have the numbers. We tried our best. But the bill is lying there. And we are hoping. Uh, well, uh, and we've uh, always sir, advocated that. So it's, it's, I mean, uh, it's I, very welcome. I appreciate if, that you uh, have mentioned what your party on, has uh, uh, done uh, so far, sir. Let but me, let us let, talk uh, uh, again about the conspiracy theories in the air. Because there are too many people talking about conspiracy theories. Uh, you know, at this moment, just for the sake of record, Qureshi sahab, you don't see them. You, uh, you don't see any conspiracy taking place anywhere at all in this country. Right, sir? Uh, Mr. Patafi, uh, there, there's been always rumor mongering. You see, uh, uh, we, we, we had a lot of rumors before the Senate elections, by the grace of Allah. I think uh, there, is a, there is a consensus between all mature political parties of this country, even the dharna parties, uh, if I may call them, that, you know, everything should be by the book and on time. So there is a lot of rumor mongering. There is a lot of accusations and allegations. Yes, we feel that the elections should be on time. Uh, they should be free, fair and uh, transparent. The election commission should uh, endorse itself. It should be uh, it should be seen to have been acting fairly. Uh, it, it did fail in the last uh, elections. Uh, well, there have been a lot of... Uh, critical aspects in the Supreme Court judgment on the uh, election and uh, the Electoral Act now is much more encompassive. It empowers the Election Commission. So we feel mm -hmm. that the elections will not be used against any party for that may be. Right. But this narrative uh, is been fueled by certain quarters even in within the PMLN that you know uh, there is a narrative that is being mm -hmm. built up against the elections. There's a, there is a narrative being built up against uh, their, their, their accountability process. I think it's right. really faltered. Uh, that should, uh, that is an interesting forward. point, Karashi Sahib, and I'm going we to come back to you, sir, in a bit. Let me come back to the, the studio the here and, and the ask Sheikh Saab about the very same thing. He's saying that there isn't any conspiracy and that there are certain quarters within your party that are promoting this kind of a narrative. And surprise, surprise, this is people's party. It used to be their narrative that democracy, uh, there, there might be some conspiracy against democracy. In 2013, it happened. Your party used to say that there isn't any. Now, somehow the roles seem to have reversed. What exactly is going on? First of all, I must uh, uh, clarify, I never said that there is a conspiracy. I right. never said about okay. it. I, you asked me about the meeting of uh, Peer Pagada and uh, Kaaf League, Mr. Parvez Eli. Right. So I said their background, because uh, I told about their background. I don't know what, uh, what is the uh, present scenario. I never talked about it. Yeah. And I don't know. He, he actually uh, spoke at length. And he yes. kept on talking about the quality of caretaker government in 2013. And then he said that if we are going to get that kind of a caretaker government, then it will be a huge loss for the country. You see, these are the two uh, parties, uh, Mr. Uh, the Prime Minister himself and the Mr. Khushisha. These are the two major parties. Mm -hmm. They have to decide about the caretaker government. Okay. If they don't decide, mm -hmm. then how can we blame to anybody else? Okay. We have to decide. It's our prerogative. Do you think uh, your, your party or your government and the opposition party, that is mm -hmm. People's Party, will be able to reach consensus? I, I definitely feel I am a politician. I, I believe in politics. This is in the benefit of our democratic uh, system. Mm -hmm. And major two parties, they have to consult their uh, allies also. Okay. Definitely they should fi uh, find a consensus candidate for the prime, uh, uh, interim prime ministership. Right. If they don't, it, it means that, uh, that our political party doesn't want the system to be, uh, to be in, uh, in harmony. You right. See, there, there will Off be the top of your head, sir, can you name a few names who might be considered for the post? I, I cannot. I, I don't know. There are rumors. I I, there was a report that yes. Tasadduk Jilani sahab might be considered. Uh, the, you see, we never discuss in any of our party meeting. Okay. No, anybody guess? Even I think last time there were uh, names, uh, two, three days before I met uh, Dr. Ishrat Hussain. Mm -hmm. He's a very close, uh, closely known to me. Mm -hmm. I asked him that your name is being circulated as the interim prime minister. Yeah. He said any name which comes into the press or public 
it's not never acceptable <laughs> <laughs> okay he's never uh, been the prime minister or never got yeah. that seat yeah. so he told me and i also feel that their names which are but his name you have to appreciate the fact that his name consistently comes in so this whenever you think about any post any senior post mm -hmm. his name all of a sudden he starts appearing told, he himself told me this is not the first time that my name is yeah, coming yeah. and I, i actually i i welcomed him i because he's very closely known to me right. he lives in karachi we are we are associated right. uh, because he's a economic expert i have a same line of yeah. Yeah, business, business man, of so i i i uh, appreciated that i welcomed him that i okay. feel that you will be the uh, legitimate name ne but he denied about it. so i next question I, yes next yes. question about the qualification of a caretaker prime minister uh, usually we have this vicious cycle that whenever we have an opening we end up nominating uh, an honorable a retired honorable justice uh, there are so many other technocrats like you have mentioned a name there are umpteen others uh, uh, do you think that this time once again we are going to end up with uh, a retired uh, judge or we are going to see some bureaucrat or a technocrat or somebody else i think uh, as you yourself mentioned anyone who is acceptable to these two gentlemen but i'm asking are, about your no, your opinion you, my opinion is any it, it should not necessarily be uh, from the uh, judiciary, judiciary uh -huh. from any department reliable name okay. with whom the people have faith and confidence uh -huh. i think uh, the, the particularly these two gentlemen and these two parties right. so he he should uh, definitely that, be, that is be quite the, interesting because uh, khurshid shah saab the opposition leader today sa said that uh, he hasn't actually taken any name to the prime minister yet the party hasn't decided yet uh, but uh, kurashi saab uh, first of all the question is uh, regarding the caretaker setup do you think that a consensus between the uh, the prime minister and the opposition leader before the due date is possible sir well mr patafi uh, i surely hope and uh, pakistan people's party uh, stands committed to that and uh, uh, we 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 are still in process of consultations uh, with the other political parties mind you khurshid shah saab does belong to pakistan people's party and which has uh, the maximum number of uh, parliamentarians in the national assembly however there are other political parties uh, with whom we have uh, uh, consulted and with some we still have to consult and then uh, by soliciting names from then and we will finalize uh, a, a list of names that uh, khurshid shah sa will share with the prime minister i think in today's meeting the overall mechanics and general discussion was done like for example pakistan people's party and and the opposition feels that uh, if the uh, national assembly is dissolved a day earlier than its tenure then mm. uh, the caretaker government has about 90 days to conduct mm. the elections because we feel there are a lot of uh, delimit petition appeals going on there's uh, uh, the, the month of ramadan coming in that will take away uh, a, a month or so and then uh, the the weather uh, and then the monsoon and the floods so we have to uh, look into all the possibilities for holding right. a successful general elections however uh, what what came out in the media was that the prime minister did listen to that suggestion but he was not mm. too receptive to that and he wanted to right. even go on till the last day which is perfectly acceptable for us coming to the uh, name for the caretaker i think uh, you made a very uh, pertinent point i think it is not really who comes from where although historically uh, former judges former now uh, bureaucrats uh, uh, have been there and you know we've had really uh, some amazing results there were still questions on the process and uh, the, the the way the election was conducted i think what is more important is that the gentleman who heads the caretaker government at least in the federation and certainly in the provinces are trustworthy names uh, are uh, honorable men and can sustain the pressure from any quarter okay. be that as it may even starting from the supreme court to any place and secondly mm -hmm. i think the paramount responsibility under the constitution to hold a free fair uh, and a transparent election is of the election commission i think we mm -hmm. we want to see an election where the chief election commissioner along with the four members take the driving seat and the interim government or the caretaker government plainly merely plays a facilitative role 
and does okay. not uh, take decisions which are which are uh, uh, key decisions uh, starting from the economy uh, to any structural decisions we have seen in the past caretaker governments uh, taking such decisions that uh, uh, the, the 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 consequent uh, uh, successor governments have a lot of problems and then they, there's a blame sharing that you know it's the caretakers who did that so we don't want that kind of thing and we will right. be looking uh, for some gentlemen okay. who can who can who can deliver uh, as right. as as we speak, because the last time, uh, absolutely, we did have a gentleman. Uh, uh, there was a gentleman from Balochistan, I believe, who was the caretaker prime minister. But he turned yeah. out to be a weak prime minister. He could not okay. even get the things done. And uh, the election commission also miserably failed in in giving us an election where on which there were not questions. So I think right. The, the, the uh, before I uh, come back to the studio here, one the, clarification is needed, sir. You were talking about preponing. Uh, the dissolution of assemblies and uh, did that proposal also include the uh, the assembly that is controlled by your party that is Sindh assembly sir sir once the federal government is dissolved i think uh, the provincial governments will follow uh, there is no cavil with that and uh, dissolution a day earlier than the tenure only gives uh, 30 more days for every party or every individual to campaign more to mobilize and I think it will augur well for Pakistan that maximum number of young people, old people actually get to have the full canvas of every party's manifesto, take a decision and go into the polls. But if the right. government feels that that is not necessary and if the prime right. minister doesn't want that, nobody he, in the world can force it. That is a that. pertinent point sir and uh, let me ask uh, about uh, this uh, point. Uh, uh, preponing the uh, the dissolution of government and assemblies makes sense no, the way he has explained yes i i uh, do agree with but the uh, prime minister rejected Mr. it the prime minister you, you see both of these cases are constitutional okay. and it all depends upon the agreement of uh, major two uh, these two gentlemen mm -hmm. uh, according to constitution and law but these uh, two gentlemen to, and then ECP of Pakistan, Election Commission of Pakistan. No, if, if, but I, I, if they I fail to... Uh, uh, you know. but, but I, I don't presume that they will fail. I have okay. confidence on uh, political Last system. time it happened. Uh, it happened, but it was unfortunate. Uh -huh. You see, it should come with the consensus. And there are okay. many, many people who can be named for, as a, a trustworthy and uh, creditable uh, names. I feel that uh, if uh, they fail, it will not be in the best interest of democratic system. Okay. And uh, I feel and I strongly believe... Well, why, would you, uh, why would you say that? Because the Election Commission of Pakistan is also an institution that is an integral part of democracy no, no, that of is Pakistan. A, that is, of course, and we have in the Constitution that if they fail, yeah. first is choice is with them. Uh -huh. And I feel that they should, uh, they should uh, definitely decide about it. Otherwise, the impression will go that the parliamentarians are not in a position to decide. If one person has to be decided. Out of 210 million people, we yeah. can't find one one person right. who, who's unanimous, I think a huge number of people are there. Right. And there uh, was another very interesting observation that we saw coming from Khurji Shah Saab, and it was about a government that is about to leave office, not presenting its budget for the entire year. Hmm. And your, uh, we know that your, your party, your government has decided to prepone uh, the presentation of the budget, and it is going to be presented this month. Yes. So, do you think that there is any weight, uh, weightage in, in that statement? You see, as you know, that I am the chairman of the Finance Committee of National Assembly. Right, sir. Our committee has uh, members from all the parties. Mm -hmm. Personally, I feel that because our prerogative is not uh, uh, maximum, it is up to the caretaker government. Okay. So, next government has their own uh, uh, prerogative. They should uh, decide about the budget. is a very important document. Right. Personally, this is this is this is the. This maybe, is your personal opinion. Yeah, this is this may be a different uh, difference opinion yeah. uh, 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 with but, my party. But along but with that disclaimer, I I feel that uh, uh, we should not give the this uh, for the whole year, mm -hmm. even if you see. If our party comes to power, okay, that will be all right. But right. If, how can we take the the main uh, policy matter of the other party if in, at all other party right. come to power? So maximum three to four months uh, budget uh, because the expenditure side of the budget is very important. Right. And we I'm, have to authorize. Uh, so I'm g going to come back to you, sir. Uh, but I'm told that uh, we are joined by Senator Faisal Javed uh, from PTI. Uh, he's with us on telephone. Faisal Javed, thank you very much, sir. Uh, for being part of the program. 
Uh, we are talking about the names of caretaker uh, prime minister. Uh, has your party actually developed some consensus regarding the names it is going to propose to the opposition leaders? Hello? Faisal Saab, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, yes. Right. Thank you very much for joining us. My, my question is about the name of caretaker prime minister. I have representation in the program from PMLN and People's Party and we were uh, talking about the possible names. Do you have any idea, A, uh, when your party will be able to evolve consensus on a name that you can recommend to the uh, uh, you know, opposition leader? Second, uh, can you also talk about ETA, when to expect it? Well, uh, I tell you what, there's a fundamental problem with the whole procedure. The mm -hmm. number one problem is opposition leader has not consulted us yet, uh, which is against uh, the true spirit of the uh, uh, democracy. Why? Because uh, we are an opposition party, okay. one of the major political parties in Pakistan. We should have been consulted so that the opposition can sort of, you know, uh, put forward names. But that mm -hmm. consultation is not happening. It has never, ever happened. So what uh, exactly Faisal, happens uh, just is... To, just, uh, just to, uh, you know, ask you, if that consultation was not there, today Khurshid Shah Sa, uh, met with, uh, you know, uh, one of the senior leaders of your party, along with the others. So that wasn't consultation at all? Well, there is some sort of Shah official that need to take place. I'm not aware of that whether okay. Khurshid Sa, uh, Shah Saab met somebody or not, but there's an uh, official procedure to that. So okay. if they consult us, we will definitely come up with some credible names who are mm -hmm. impartial, and we, we do think that uh, those uh, names can deliver and come up with an impartial, because the ultimate, the ultimate objective of having a caretaker is basically holding a free and fair elections, and that's about it. So we are always there, but the problem with Khurshid Shah is that he has always been doing this friendly opposition with PMLN, even last right. time. So what happens is that Sweetia is never ever consulted officially. Okay, uh, Faisal Saab, do stay with us because uh, we have with us uh, Qureshi Saab from uh, uh, you know People's Party and he doesn't seem to be agreeing with you. Qureshi Saab, your take, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Patafi. Uh, I think uh, that's just a bald allegation, uh, which, which is probably an uh, 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 old habit of, uh, of uh, my learned friend coming from PTI. Uh, what procedure he's talking about, probably he doesn't know. As far as the parliamentary procedures are concerned, since he's a newly inducted me uh, member, I'm sure he must have gone through uh, the Senate rules and the National Assembly. The parliamentary party head in the National Assembly is the person who needs to be consulted by the leader of the opposition. And Mr. Khurshid Shah in 2013, as well as now, did consult the PTI parliamentary leader and the uh, other linear members. Maybe uh, Mr. Javed is not aware of the meeting or the details of the meeting. And yeah. Even last time, we took names. There was a lot of uh, uh, discussion on that within the opposition, and then the names were f put forwarded, and the PTI did agree to that, uh, that the last time the caretaker prime minister. And let me assure him that we what, will what consult each and every opposition party, okay, from PTI uh, uh, going all the way, uh, even if they have one member. Right, Qureshi sir, uh, hang on in there. Uh, I'm coming back to you. Faisal Javed sir, uh, 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 although this uh, statement has been rebutted by the uh, you know, People's Party's representation, both of you have Both of you are entitled to your opinions. But let us talk about ETA. Your party uh, is supposed to have some names, right? So when are we going to see those names being recommended to P uh, People's Patafi Party? Saab. He is talking about books and everything, whereas ground reality is that, of course, there are rules and everything is there. But how does PT, a People's Party handle these things? Over the years, you've been witnessing that People's Party and PMLN, they do this uh, JV all the time, and they don't care about any other political party. So the problem is that rules and regulations or whatever, those are there in place. But does People's Party follow them? No is the answer. 
the other thing is that yes we are committee they have come up with some names consultation is there but the problem is that leader of the opposition international assembly has not consulted pti officially so okay so today today thing. actually okay today can actually Mr. it was reported uh, that he met the, uh, shah mahmood qureshi but regardless of that sir one more question or uh, uh, parliament when are you going to share those names so with the media share the facts then if somebody asks us share those names pti is uh, is is the second largest political party of pakistan but the problem with the leader of opposition is that they haven't really asked us anything so the okay. problem is it is a fundamental problem which is a historic problem not new this is right. something we've been witnessing before as well that people's mm. party and pmln they do this jv jv is a business terminology that i'm using and it is a right. business for them a joint venture okay uh, faisal uh, jave thank you very much sir for your time uh, let me come back to the studio and then have to go to lahore once again as well uh, we were talking about uh, the budget and you said that maybe uh, you know a uh, mini budget uh, that uh, takes care uh, you have jurisdiction till the caretaker government and maybe they there should be some uh, you know measure that covers that time period but the next government should actually present its budget the problem is that we see only one budget every year we are not supposed to see a mini budget and then another there is no restriction okay. there is no risk we can have as many as budget the tradition is like that but this is the first time the situation is like that how can a party uh, who is not in power you see who knows who will be in power after 3 months or 4 right. months whatever after the election so i feel that uh, this is the main policy matter in the uh, in the national assembly mm -hmm. and uh, you see senate is uh, not uh, uh, approving the money bill mm -hmm. uh, mainly the national assembly does it and new elections are uh, uh, are in process yeah. so i feel this is it is my own personal opinion although my government or my party uh, may not agree with it mm -hmm. but i feel this is uh, this is uh, the their uh, uh, prerogative the next their, prerogative. next yes their their pre and uh, so, definitely so what are you suggesting you see, uh, as I, the chair I, of uh, finance committee yes uh, i first of all i suggest to them Uh, that all these things should also come to the finance committee where we have various party members mm -hmm. all party members there we are, most of our decisions throughout uh, two and a half years i had been chairman of this uh, uh, committee we had a unanimous and uh, consensus uh, 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 yes recommendations okay. so i feel that we should uh, f had discussion i believe in discussion and in interaction and i feel there will be consensus on that yeah, so the, the 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 issue right now is that the current fiscal policy expires in july yes uh, by the end of by the the end june of june yeah mm. and and the problem is after that there will be a caretaker government and as we have already qualified this uh, a caretaker government doesn't have that kind of power to approve such bills yes. uh, um, let me take this problem this question to qureshi saab sir uh, can you uh, or can your party actually recommend some course of action because khurshid shah saab actually had uh, objection to it and he uh, made this objection today yes certainly uh, uh, we feel and uh, mr mr sheikh has very aptly pointed out and i would uh, agree with him that you see uh, uh, any parliament uh, which has the legislative capacity and also the power uh to impose taxes or you know bring in a uh money bill uh has uh, uh, can't go beyond its uh, parliamentary tenure and you can't can't transgress the timeline that the constitution prescribes just like you have a five year sunset clause that after that uh, uh, you have to that the assembly dissolves automatically all the powers invested in that assembly elected through their chosen representatives uh, also goes away now in this case uh, what pmln is doing is uh, something which is beyond their constitutional mandate of, for this government mm -hmm. and that's why we feel that yes we don't want pakistan to become like 
uh, 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 an example in the world like the US uh, uh, at times is that you know the budget is not given and the government stops functioning we would certainly want that uh, 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 in terms sort we of a budget for to three become to four another United States so that the salaries and the day-to-day -day expenses can be met uh, okay. is, is is given but where the policy making is where the taxation measures are they should all be left with the government that is to be sworn in because it is their prerogative like, so what are you to, proposing to sort sir? out the economy to, to do give you have any framework in mind this is this is absolutely going beyond their mandate secondly if you may allow me uh, on the on the question of uh, the names i think mr javed needs to go down in history the 2013 so there was a jv between the pmln and the pti because they were in the opposition and they gave right. the names of uh, nasir salam zahid and shakirullah jan and raus raus baksh rais and uh, even uh, dr ishrat hussain so telling yeah. us that we were in cahoots with the PMLN or a JV is absolutely um, a, a far-fetched uh, observation. And even had, now, had the I think Qureshi this I get your point, but the, the humble submission is Mr. Senator Javed has left. Uh, so uh, now we have to talk about the budget again. But you said that whatever is uh, going to happen regarding budget is beyond the pale of government's authority. Let us talk about your proposal. The country cannot run without a budget and come July, we won't have a budget till the time it is not passed today. So wh what is your party actually proposing uh, the, should be done? You can have uh, an interim uh, uh, ordinance and the president to Pakistan in the absence because president is also part of the parliament, Senate, National Assembly and the president of Pakistan make the parliament the, the terminology parliament has the three three organs in it the upper house and the president will be there so there can be uh, a, a measure, measure like uh, um, uh, this measure the, the the panama ordinance right two days before the session is starting on the april 9th the the, the president promulgates a, a dirty money laundering ordinance which is primarily catered to launder the money of whoever the cronies are or whoever the corrupt people are on the cost of the uh, uh, taxpayer so uh, if uh, the president of Pakistan can uh, promulgate an ordinance and the ordinance can be passed or not passed but you have you can have legislative means constitutional means to 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 look after the day-to-day -day affairs and after all we've had okay. examples where the caretakers have come right. up with the, uh, let me uh, uh, let budgets. me go to Sheikh Saab uh, uh, for this uh, uh, you know this statement uh, he says that this is, uh, you know, dirty money laundering bill. <laughs> that he, was he, I think uh, he has not uh, seen the bill. Yeah. There has been unanimously by all parties approved about, we have, you see this bill had three sections. Uh -huh. First is reduction in income tax rates. Okay. That was a demand of business community and salaried people since last 50 years. Tax this board. is one of the best things. Okay. Everyone, every salary, even uh, he, his, Mr. Heather Zawan himself, and yours, Mr. Farah, mm -hmm. my every salaried person, every businessman has got more uh, 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 benefit for, with this uh, uh, reduction of income. This was the demand of uh, everyone since 50 years. And up to now, 400,000 mm -hmm. was the amount which, uh, 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 since, uh, which was not uh, taxable. Okay. So you see 400,000 means 33,000 rupees a month. Mm -hmm. How can one pay at this meager amount of 33,000 a month that, that so everyone got benefit from this and uh, I could not believe tell me I tell you okay. I had been president 31 years ago of Ch Karachi Chamber of Commerce and uh, since then I have been very active mm -hmm. and uh, my son has been president Lahore Chamber of Commerce Industry right. I tell you that these things debated and demanded thousands of times okay. uh, and couldn't believe it could and have finally been, there is a solution. it could have been from 400,000 to 500,000 so, uh, maximum our demand Mr. Patavi, now it this is, is up cherry to 12 picking. This up is to 1.2 million rupees there's no tax right. and up to 2.4 million Sheikh, sir, it might be a very popular decision but with due respect the reason why people keep on questioning is hmm. uh, why is did it take you five you years and why do you need this end. why yes, why but if a good thing I tell I reply I would like to reply using this one brought at the end 
जी थैंक यू सो मच मिस्टर पिताफी इफ आई मे रिस्पॉन्ड वी वी डोंट हैव अ प्रॉब्लम विद द रिडक्शन ऑफ इनकम टैक्स रेट्स इट्स इट्स वेरी हेल्दी एंड वेरी वेलकम वी वी आर नॉट ऑब्जेक्टिंग टू दैट पार्ट ऑफ दैट एंड सर्टेनली दैट शुड हैव कम मच अर्लियर बट वेयर इज द एनहांसमेंट ऑफ टैक्स बेस विच वॉज द बेसिस ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक टीम ऑफ द करंट गवर्नमेंट यू नो फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट टू मिलियन टैक्स पेयर्स सेवन हंड्रेड थाउजेंड आर सैलरीड क्लास एंड देन द अदर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस ड्रिक्यूनियन uh law are absolutely questionable you are opening a uh, flood gates and an abuse of authority now you who will determine the that the uh, a property was bought okay. or, or transferred at a lesser rate and then there will be people who will be buying back the government as the already doesn't have the money and the government will be buying 100% more and secondly you have imposed 72 types of withholding taxes and then the provision uh, that nobody who's a, who's a non filer of uh, or non ntn holder would not be able to transfer any property over 4 million well let me tell the honorable prime minister and the honorable finance minister go read article 70 and 77 of the constitution you cannot uh, tax or force anyone to get an ntn if he has solely agriculture income so you are penalizing the farmers the peasants the people who have solely agricultural income to pay taxes under the withholding tax mode and to become on 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 grata they right. are not uh, taxable sahab, uh, persons under the uh, federal uh, income tax sahab, law how point. can you uh, sir i'm uh, told that, that, that somebody to cannot transfer uh, if somebody was, you are penalizing people of pakistan okay. and then the, sahab, uh, the, uh, the exemption sir, to the uh, farmer that that the exam- please listen to me program. please listen to me i'll Would just you complete kindly i'll just give complete give us your uh, conclusion the, sir crash is up conclude the program the farmer exemption limit is 80000 on income tax and the, uh, the, the other people you are giving 1.2 million what kind of disparity is that so you are creating two different regimes the purpose is this, this you is bring correct. in dollars okay. we will give 2% and then right. you make them white this we is not so correct. what will happen the rupee will further shed value anyone. people will okay. buy dollars they will take it abroad but do uh, uh, pay the cost of taking it abroad through illegal channels and then you are succe- uh, uh, pa- okay. exposing pakistan uh, to go into the blacklist from the sir, i have to conclude the, the program already, thank you very much uh, are representative were in the yeah. finance I, committee i have to agreed. conclude the program so because kind of they are representatives of people party and pti were in the finance committee and okay. own property they fully agreed and right. it is not the question checks of pti or people's party agreed. this is they the wrong bill at the wrong time 
5th of uh, April okay. at, at 11 o'clock, then this policy was announced on the same they day. They gave you their consent? Yes, they, they, they consent and uh, you can have, see the minutes. Oh, I'm talking on property, on okay. property value. Well, we will, and, uh, let no me be on the record. On the we will boot it out right. in Senate. Sir, um, we will reject so it in the National we'll, Assembly. Uh, continue and we will boot it out in the day, sir. I'm act. told that we have to conclude the program. Thank you very much for your time. Kaiser Sheikh Sab, thank you very much, sir, for your time as well. We as you have listened to our participants. The uh, end of discussion was quite uh, uh, warm, so to say. Uh, you know, the, there was a discussion on some hot button issues, but we will try to do justice to them uh, in the coming programs. We have to take, uh, uh, you know, uh, conclude the program now. Uh, thank you very much for watching us. Take care.